Okay, my friends, this is going to be more for doctors than just the average person. I'm going to be talking about your immune system and what you need to support your immune system. And this is the most important thing, the enzyme, serine hydroproxymethylene transferase, big long word. It's a catalyst. It's an enzyme, the enzyme. Where do enzymes come from? Bacteria. If you don't have that bacteria, you cannot create these products, which is the the glycine products. You, you just can't do it. It's never going to happen. All right, like I said, this is this is going to be a little advanced. We're going to be talking about this serine enzyme. So let's go to the next step here. This is the problem: is this Enterococcus facium which is a, <clears throat> it's a bacterial film. And this particular enzyme, which is a serine hydroproxymethylase, could be used as a potential target because it, it, they're working with what they call one carbon metabolism. That's just one little bit hanging off the edge. <clears throat> and they can use it and, and statically grab a hold of it. See this? Bacterio statically. Static means like when you get something stuck to you because it has a little extra charge to it. That's what one carbon stuff does. And it can inhibit the growth of this enterococcus facium at 50% effective concentrations. Now, let me show you something that should knock your socks off. All right, you see this big long thing up here, serine hydroxymethyl transferase. Well, all that is is SHMT, and there's different styles of it, <clears throat> apparently. I'm not that deep into this, but I do know for a fact that you, these enzymes and these one-carbon enzymes, extremely elegant series of events has to happen for an enzyme to do what you need done. And this goes through it pretty good. It's a complex network of enzymes. It goes, you got a whole bunch of enzymes working together. And it, enzymes are from bacteria. And if you don't have the right bacteria, you are not going to get the enzymes. You're not going to get the chemistry. You don't have the chemistry. I don't care what happens. You're stuck. And these are the chemical... All of these things have to happen. Exactly. And I mean exactly. Or it's... That's why the one carbon is the key. All you got to do is throw one carbon in there in the wrong place, and that attacker just goes away. Once again, this is the kind of stuff that gets me. This goes back to 2014, and they say during the past few decades, that's 20 or 30 years, this enterococci have emerged as important healthcare associates pathogens. Blah, blah. Well, here it says here, <clears throat> over the past two decades, the thing they were just talking about, enterococcus fascium, has emerged as a leading cause of multi-drug resistant enterococcal infection. And it's going through all of the tubes and so forth in the hospitals and everything. It's a major reason for infection in the hospitals. <clears throat> and um, it says multi-drug resistant infection in the United States. Intrinsically more antibiotic resistant than E. facilius. And this is what's happening in the hospitals. People are getting it and they can't, they can't treat it because it's anti-drug resistant. It appears to me, if they can come up with the right engineered microbe, it can click on one of these carbons in the right place and knock that right out. That's what they're making it sound like. Now, this goes back a very long time. And um, <clears throat> it, it, way back to 93, continuing progress, Medicare toward more intensive and invasive medical therapies. Undoubtedly contributed to the increased prevalence of these remarkable opportunistic pathogens. Once they see everything else is wiped out, they go right in there. That's why some of this antibiotic stuff is certainly not necessarily the way to go. All right, this is what you have to realize bacterial enzymes, 
they change everything. They are absolute destroyers or builders. They do both. <clears throat> now, this is multi-drug resistant bacteria. This is stuff resistant to it because we don't have a bacteria that can go and attack it. That's why they're resistant. They have figured a way to get into our system and avoid our protection devices. If we can get one little click to that protein, which is so sophisticated, one click, it's done. And what do we have to have? We need bacterial enzymes. They're responsible for degradation of proteins. Let's look at what a protein is. Okay, let's just go through this real quick and I'll finish up. All of these different colors are different actual molecules that have all these different colors. Literally, they have those different colors. And this is what a polypeptide chain looks like. That comes right out of the back of an end of a of a um, a bacteria. They squirt it out just like this. Some squirt out big long ones, some squirt out shorter ones, some squirt out one or two at a time. And then they all sort of do this. They come back, boom, boom, and then they add all together. And then when they hit a certain number, a certain sequence, they go and and they all ball together and they make an exact copy of just like this, which is the, just the most un, unbelievably elegant molecule you could ever imagine. What are all these little dots on the end here? Those are all magnetic signatures. That says I want a plus, I want a negative, I want a plus, I want a plus, a plus, a plus, a plus, a plus, I want a negative, 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 and if it doesn't match exactly, they don't interact. If this one says, because it knows a program, it came out of there, it didn't just do it by accident, it came out with a program, it says go find a guy that has all of these things and whack onto him, and then just kill him. That's what an enzyme does. Now, here's the real clincher. It's what's called click chemistry. This is only one single enzyme molecule, just one, comes up and it finds 10 million other molecules that are the bad guys. They're all in a ball. They're basically in a tumor. It goes click and they all die at once because it's, a, it's a magnetic. It's a magnetic ripple right through the thing. And that's exactly what happens in electricity. Electricity is it's done instantly. Magnetism. And then it goes on, it goes and kills some more. If you can find another pile of them somewhere. Okay, my friends, I am on this major bacteria situation. <clears throat> now, what is a bacteriostatic agent? There's the bacteriostatic agent, a bacteriostat, a B-stat. It's a biological chemical agent that does this. It stops bacteria from reproducing. does not kill them. Not necessarily killing them. It doesn't, well, it can, but not always. So it just stops them because we need bad bacteria in us. We absolutely need it. You need bacteria that will attack your own cells, but only when they give off a signal that says, come attack me, I'm dead. It's called apoptosis. We need to have the same chemistry in us that breaks us only on command. That's the key. Now, here's what you see right here. These are the way these bacteria are in our body. There's all different shapes of them, and that's just a magnetic configuration. And let's say this one right here is the one that's got to at get attacked. And I guarantee you 100% certainty that this will attach to this differently than that will attach and that will attach. It depends on how this is configured and how is this magnetic signature is. This may not even want to just stay away from it. It'll just keep going on its way. This is no magnetic attachment, but it might come up and go that. And now this one it can't go and do this job anymore. Or it might come up to this one and go like that. And the whole thing turns crazy. Or something like this. I mean, it, who knows what it's going to do when it hits the target. But the key is, you need a killer. First of all, there's two of them. There's, there's the bacteriostatic. And then there's one other bacterioside. It's around here somewhere. The bacterioside kills them. Case closed. That's what an antibiotic is, is a killer.
It kills them. But it doesn't just kill the good ones. It kills a lot of them that have a similar little magnetic s signature. It kills them all. So you need the ones that do the right job. Kill the ones you want to kill. Don't kill the other ones. And sometimes don't kill them at all. Just let them see, hang around there for a while because you're going to use them sooner or later.